Hello and welcome to this very important pro-life program where we bring you Dr. Alfred Kratochville. Uh, he's a pioneer in the development of ultrasound, uh, one of the, the first people to develop ultrasound, if not the first throughout the world. He's a physician in Vienna and was born in 1928. And I'd like to introduce him to you now. Uh, Dr. Katroville, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I want to talk so much about your career as a yeah. physician. You were born in 1928 yeah. and went to med medical school here in Vienna. In Vienna, yeah. And you graduated in the 1950s. And mm -hmm. within seven years, you were already head of your department in ops, uh, obstetrics and gynecology. This was at the uh, Second University Frauenklinik or yeah. Women's Clinic in Vienna. Yeah. So you were obviously, as the Germans would say, a clever fellow, kluges Kälchen, no? Okay. <laughs> no, um, you have to know as well that in the beginning you have to do different uh, specialties as well uh -huh. in case you want to become a, a general practitioner. Uh -huh. And we started this four. So you had general then, training, right? And then afterwards I started the special training in OBGYN. Now, I understand you're also an internist as well, is that true? No, no, no. no you're just no. a specialist in, in obstetrics in, in, and gynecology. Uh, gynecology yeah. yeah, and you, you actually met your, your wife uh, early on when you were only in your teens at a Catholic youth group. A um, Catholic youth group in St. Anton from Badua. It's in the 10th district in Vienna. It's in Vienna. Yeah. And then it was several years later that you would marry and you have five children and six grandchildren, Yeah. which is wonderful. Um, before we get to your, your, your stellar career in the development of ultrasound, I want to ask you a little bit about your family. Yeah, please. So you came from a Catholic family, your wife as well. Um, what role did Catholicism play in your early life? Well, we went to the youth group there, and so we met in several times in between the, the Sundays. Uh -huh. So we had... Uh -huh. uh, meetings there as well, and this was quite nice because we have as well to take tours together and so on and so on. And, uh -huh, so on. Uh -huh. and you were obviously, you took your faith seriously, you went to Mass every Sunday and so on. Yeah. Did, did um, Catholicism, you said, didn't really play a role in your interest in, in becoming a physician. You just had an interest in medicine from early on? From early on, yeah. From early on. But you didn't know it would be as an OBGYN yet? No, 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 no. Yet, because you started as a normal practitioner, mm -hmm. and then you look what, to see what interests you. Well, what what's interesting you? Yeah. Now, uh, when you married, were you a physician already, or were you still in training? Oh, just at the end. Just at the end of your training, um, your wife conceived a son, your first child, yeah. whose name is Wolfgang. Wolfgang. Yeah. And I understand that there were difficulties with the delivery, which would He's later. Brain damaged. Yeah. Yes, he was brain damaged um, because of his delivery with forceps, and she had. Um, uh, eclampsia. She had, pardon me. Eclampsia. Yeah. Oh, she had eclampsia as well. Mm. Preeclampsia. Um, she, with this, with this high blood pressure and with um, the brain damage and so on, um, that was was this crucial to your interest in developing early ultrasound, or did that not come till later? It came till later. It still yeah. came later. Yeah. It came later, yes, of course. Um, at this time, there was no ultrasound available. In no, none at all. Um, what's interesting to me is as early as 1964, so that's before I was born, uh, you were already working with something called X-ray placentography, which mm. I guess was the predecessor of ultrasound? Yeah, it was the primary interest, because you have to have in mind that at former times when the wife had bleedings in the uh, second or third trimester. Uh -huh. You couldn't uh, see it by x-ray or other things. The so state, you didn't know the cause of the bleeding? They stayed weeks and weeks. In the in, hospital, in the bed, hospital. Uh, bed rest. Yeah. Bed. Um, and so your primary interest was really trying to help women and trying to diagnose what, where the placenta was and how healthy yeah. the baby was, yeah. correct? Yeah. I think it's fascinating that you actually uh, developed an interest in ultrasound by visiting a neurosurgeon who was talking about cerebral bleeding, uh, yeah. so bleeding of the brain, and you thought to yourself, this could be used in obstetrics. No, it was a bit different because at former times we had in the uh, 
possibility each week to listen to somebody talking uh -huh. in the in one and, of in medical societies, yeah. Medical societies. And there I found that one uh, guy was doing this ultrasonic examination mm -hmm. because I had a very big difficulty because I used isotopes uh, okay. to, to localize the placenta. Okay. And I presented it. Was that very difficult? And it was not difficult and it was uh, absolutely harmless, but oh. nobody who didn't understand anything uh -huh. from it, uh -huh. they shouted and wanted me to... To stop. <laughs> to stop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, I had as, uh, was uh, as gynecologist responsible for patients which were laying in the intense, intense care. Stay, uh, care and uh, look there for them. And then I met there a really nice man and we talked about it and I asked him different things, if this and that would be mm -hmm. possible. And he said, yes, there's no problem, you can do it, it's no harm. And then I developed the, the X-ray, uh, the ultrasonic examination. Wow, and you were the first person really to do interventional ultrasound, um, whereby you were making amniocentesis safer for the mother and for the child, yeah. which I guess it's was not so safe. On, that came later. That came later on, but primarily it was as well that you were able to see where is the placenta located. Mm -hmm. Is it really a placenta previa or is it a normal... Is it a uh, normal pregnancy or not? A normal pregnancy and the reason for the uh, bleeding was quite different. Yeah, and then you could diagnose and yeah. treat better yeah. before the baby was born. Yeah. Um, uh, I. You were using a so-called A-scope that was developed by Kretz Technik, yeah. a company, and um, A-scan. A-scan, it's called in English. A okay, A-scan, yeah. and um, this was, if I'm correct, the first machine you used for ultrasound. Yeah. Correct. That's, that's correct. And you were able finally to locate with 90% accuracy where the placenta was, where the baby was. Yeah, this was different because you had to look inside because you had only blips of the... Oh, of like radar blips almost. Ra like radar blips. No. So you didn't have the yeah. pictures yet like today. No, 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 this come later. That came yeah. later. It came later. Um, in December in 1965, you presented your, your findings at the Austrian Society of Gynecology and Obstetrics. Yeah. Um, how was that received? Oh, differently. <laughs> because I know my father, who was a physician, said a lot of the time when yeah. physicians come out with some new idea, like the idea that you should wash your hands before delivery, yeah. a lot of the old-fashioned doctors fought it because it wasn't the usual way. So I wondered if your, your findings in ultrasound were considered um, controversial in any way. Well, anyway, they said, let them work. Let him work? <laughs> Just let him work? <laughs> Just let him work. If it's not good, then it stopped anyway. You but, said, yes, I'm sorry, go ahead. But then anyway, at the saw as well, the success of it, then they said, okay, we will see and do we'll this. We'll see what happens, yeah. You said there was only one person who did any ultrasound work in the world before you, and that was Ian Donald, Donald in Scotland. In, in what Scotland. exactly did he do? He uh, examined as well uh, the... The placenta? Okay. Uh, no, not the placenta, he had the first B-scanner, where he had, instead of the blips, lines. Mm -hmm. And this was very nice. No? Because so you, did it have pictures then? They had, they had pictures, yeah. They did have pictures, and you later but, received an honor from, from his yeah, widow Donald, yeah. in honor of your work yeah. in ultrasound. Yeah, I'm Donald Medal. That's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, how early now can people see the fetal heartbeat. I mean, you were able to do it as early as six weeks, which yeah. was which was a huge miracle at that time and brand new mm -hmm. in the medical field. Um, now they can probably detect it even earlier. Even earlier. Yeah. Even earlier. Uh, how important is it really to hear the fetal heartbeat? No, to, to see if the baby is alive or not alive. Because I uh, remember one case which was quite interesting because he had always good friends in the clinic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he told me, you diagnosed a baby with fetal heart action. That was only a scan. Uh -huh. And two days later, I learned 
that during the night time they were going up to the operating theater to operate the patient because this was an ectopic pregnancy. It was ah, like, right. It was uh, in the fallopian tubes, yes. In the fallopian tubes. And so nobody did believe it. But anyway, they had to go. So they, then, they used the ultrasound when you weren't there? No, they didn't use it. Oh, they didn't use and it? They, they didn't use I used it before and said, uh -huh. uh, the baby is alive, I have a heartbeat. Uh -huh. And then it came down and said, <laughs> what you are doing? We have operated this patient. I uh, made the curatage, there was nothing inside. Ah, because they looked in the wrong place. But they didn't know that it's an ectopic place. Right, right, right. One day later, I come in the morning and said, today they went up in, uh, during the night time mm -hmm. to operate the patient before ectopic pregnancy. Was because they discovered that she was... No, it ruptured. The, the, the oh, she, the, baby, the placenta ruptured? No, not the placenta, the tube ruptured. Oh, the tube ruptured? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Wow. So they should have listened then to you. Become... Then everything was silence. <laughs> um, interesting as you went on to work with um, Kretz Technik to um, refine ultrasound machines. Yeah. And this was over many years? Yeah. I would say between 25 and 30 years. Between 25 and 30 years. Yeah. So you saw great improvement in the use of the machines and were able to have active um, uh, active involvement in how yeah. the machines worked and what they showed. Yeah. Um, was well, it, was it, uh, I mean, how did that work exactly? Did you, did you tell them what you wanted or did you give them feedback on how it helped you or how did that work exactly? No, anyway, it was quite interesting for the uh, chief of the hospital of the gynecology and you, department. Of course, yes. Professor Husslein. Huh? Uh -huh. At first he said no. And then he saw the success, and, mm -hmm. then, and he get many uh, calls. May I send my one of my uh, doctors to Vienna to learn this ultrasound by? And so we developed a great uh, a great relationship with uh, testing. Yeah. Do they still make ultrasound machines to this day? Yeah, of course. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they became very famous, yeah. I suppose. Uh, Kretz was then uh, bought by. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it was a, it's owned by another company yeah, now. By now. Um, uh, you actually, to me, it's quite amazing. You, you trained hundreds, yeah. maybe thousands of physicians, not just obstetricians, but also um, radiologists in how to read ultrasound and how, and how to use ultrasound from all over the world. It was, it was quite interesting because at first they were testing me, of course, and sending the patient. And uh, I remember one uh, especially where the uh, professor, the uh, ordinarius. He was called, okay, uh, the ordinarius, uh, yes. Ordinarius came with a patient and said, this patient had a pleural effusion. Okay. I don't know where I have to insert the needle. Okay. Could you help me? Yeah. And said, be here. It was the deepest part because if you pick uh, insert a little too high, you can't release it. So he was quite content with this. So you told him where it was and yeah. he was able to... Yeah, he sat by me, made the point, uh -huh. picked in. One hour later he called me, worked perfectly. Worked perfectly. <laughs> and for people who don't know what a plural infusion, effusion is, can you explain what that is? It's liquid in between the pleura mm -hmm. and, the, and the lung. And the lung. That's what I was mm -hmm. going to say, mm -hmm. near the lung. So they had a liquid or a liquid in, in the, the lung that in, they had in to the remove. In the thorax. In the thorax, okay, in that the they thorax, had to yeah. remove. Um, you also went on to write the earliest textbook, or one of the earliest textbooks mm -hmm. on ultrasound. Uh, that was in the early 1970s. Um, you wrote over 300 papers. You yeah. published so much material, some people thought you were actually a surgeon or a member of another specialty because your work crossed over into internal medicine and so many other fields. Um, how did you find time to do all of this and work as a physician as well? Uh, it's quite interesting because the others were becoming interested as well, of course. Of and course. therefore, as I told you, the one from came, why well, have to insert my needle? Mm -hmm. Another surgeon was coming with a boy, 
12 years of mm-hmm, age. Mm-hmm. He had a pancreatic cyst. He was, he was uh, had an accident, uh, fell with his abdomen against uh, a rock. I fell against a rock, okay. Uh, and then developed a, a sort of abscess and cyst inside. An abscess, okay. He punctured. He punctured it, right? Yeah. With a needle? With, oh. the needle mm-hmm. with the needle, but to less. Two, uh, two days later, or uh, four, four or five days later, he come again, it refilled. It refilled, it, so he didn't get the right spot. Yeah. He, he had the right spot, he, but it was not uh, all removed. Ah, okay. He, therefore. Therefore, he came to you yeah. and asked to use the ultrasound to see if there was still... Um, One of the nicest stories <laughs> the, as well. I had a guest and we want to go for lunchtime. Okay. And uh, the normal uh, uh, was not open, so I hired a taxi and mm-hmm. we went somewhere. And I wanted to pay, and the taxi driver turned around. Aren't you Dr. Kratochwil? So yes. Yes. You uh, have diagnosed by me this and this. I was operated, I have no pains, you don't pay anything. You don't have to pay me. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely story. That's wonderful. Um, you eventually became the head of the department of the ultrasonic diagnosis at the university's um, female clinic in 1972. Mm-hmm. By this time you were married, did you, and you went on to have uh, a total of five children. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you raised them Catholic as well, uh, and you said your wife was very Catholic too. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, she passed away how long ago? Mm-hmm. It's now. Nine months. Nine months only. We're very sorry. We'll pray for her. Um, you had five boys. I have five boys. Now and the one is brain damaged. One is brain damaged, yeah, yeah. and being careful. This for. was typical, of course, of this time. It was very typical, was it? Because uh, the I don't tell the name, of course, but this was a assistant, a high one, and it was late in the evening. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, we will have a good rest in half an hour in the administered contractions. Yeah, he induced the baby. Mm-hmm. And then everything stopped. Then oh. they have to perform a... a they had to use forceps to get forceps, the baby out. Mm-hmm. And then he had the brain, brain, brain damage. damage. And this was your first child. It must My have been child, devastating. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's living now in Sorry now. So now where you have all this... Uh, a kind of a home, home, home yeah. where they care for him. Yeah. Um, obviously, as a, a, even though you were an obstetrician, you didn't deliver your own children, correct? No, 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 no. no, no. But you would have been in the room and known what was happening, so... Oh, not... Just around. <laughs> oh, just around the corner, okay. <laughs> just around. Corner. Because I know in those times, uh, the husband wasn't allowed in the room, and things were much different than today, where they want the husband to participate in the birth and, and so on. Um, uh, in 1973, you founded the Austrian Ultrasound Society. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've, you've written four books. You've been in four educational films. And you've also played a role in um, 3D. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we even now have 4D ultrasound, which is amazing. Um, and you were doing this as late as the 1990s when you were a professor, where was it, the University of Vienna? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you were teaching the use of 3D ultrasound yeah. and some of the techniques that you had discovered. Yeah, we have uh, regular uh, teams or uh, regular times where we had to educate other people, so it was quite nice to, to, to work there. So it's nice. Yeah, so that was your, your in, in quotation marks, that was your retirement, sort of, when you went to teach instead of, instead of practicing medicine as a physician every day? No, uh, that wasn't the end, because uh, it was some problems in the clinic and I left, and I became uh, primarius in Baden, mm-hmm. in the, in the uh, uh, Geburtshilfe in obstetrics and gynecology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I worked there for another two years and brought them up again from few uh, deliveries up to two, three hundred a year because all others were going around to Mödling and the other. When did abortion become legal in Austria? I don't know. You don't know? No, no. I know that um, ultrasound 
and our viewers and listeners will know this, ultra, uh, ultrasound is extremely important, um, I would guess in many countries, but especially in the United States, in the fight against abortion, because pro-abortion organizations like Planned Parenthood fight in court so that the pregnant women cannot look at the ultrasound, that they are not required to show the ultrasound because, of course, in your ultrasound you can see the baby. You can see the baby, you can see the heart action, you can see the movements of the baby. You can see the baby sucking its thumb? Oh, sometimes. Sometimes? <laughs> sometimes. You know if it's a male but or a female the, baby? Uh, uh, not so early. Because not so early? How early? Oh, I would say in the third month or so. Third month or so, okay. Until this time, most times, not so early. Yeah, sometimes the baby is coy and doesn't want mm -hmm. to show you, right? Um, how does it feel knowing that your invention has been used, first of all, to save incalculable numbers of babies, mm -hmm. women who changed their mind because mm -hmm. they saw it's not just tissue, it's a baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does that make you feel? I, I would think you would feel very humble. Yeah? Yeah? It's good that you have the possibility to show them because they weren't educated enough to know that that, that was you, a real baby. That was a real baby. No? Um, Some cells, nothing else. Yeah, and of course you knew better all along. Yeah, Even exactly. today, come see, come see, come see the baby. Uh, it's also important to note that the ultrasound has also made pregnancy much safer for mothers as well. Correct. Yes, of course. Can you explain a little bit how? Uh, no, quite clearly, because you can uh, see at first the position of the baby inside. You can already calculate in a normal time where no delivery is near around that the baby is normal in the head position, mm -hmm. or it's a breech presentation, it's not right. quite, or it's a transverse position, and so on. Right. And it, it, uh, so that helps with delivery. Detect. as well as, as early detection of problems with the baby so that yeah. you can intervene now these days and often yeah, even so do surgery before the, the baby yeah, is born. Of course, yeah. um, there's a very famous picture of Michael Clancy you might have seen where the little baby is being operated on and he reaches his little hand outside the womb and he's holding the doctor's hand yeah. with a finger. <laughs> That's a beautiful nice. picture. Yeah. That's a beautiful picture. Yeah. Um, uh, Tell me a little bit how you feel as a Catholic playing such a role in preserving Humble. life. Humble. Humble. <laughs> You're a great man, no. and it's, it's an honor to meet you. Thank and you. And I would like to thank you so much for being on our program. Thank you. And uh, God bless you, Doctor. Thank you so much you for all well. that you yeah. have given to the world. Yeah, thank you. And uh, with those words, I'd like to thank you for joining us as we interviewed the inventor of ultrasound, Dr. Alfred Gratoville, who is uh, a physician who is 86 years young and still lives here in Vienna. Thanks for joining us.